Hey there YouTube, Superbrain AK here. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the Teen Tenergy TB6B that I've had for five years. These are what I'm going to talk about. So let's get on with it. So this is the box that I've got. Still have it. It's gotten a little bit beat up, but I use it to store all the little bits and bobs that I have. And it's still got the foam packaging. So, one thing you don't get with this is the power supply for it. It takes 11 to 18 volts on the input here. So I've just got it running off of 13.8 volts and it's taking 60 milliamps. Sorry about that. All right. So, first thing you're probably going to want to do is charge a lithium battery. Something like this Turning G Nanotech, which I've also had for quite a few years. Um, first thing you want to do, connect this on. Well, you do get whoops charging squid which is not an octopus it's a squid which has your connectors this big one here is the Traxxas connector and I believe I bought this from Hobby King or Harbor Freight something like that and then you got your banana plugs on this side or since it didn't have an XD60 I got this tent uh, 10 gauge, 12 gauge, banana plug to XD60 connector. And take that, plug in your balance board. So if you're using a 6S, plug the 6S directly into there, unless you want a little bit of an extension. And here is for your 2S. Plug that in, and let's get zoomed up on the screen. So, right now, we have it set to lithium-ion battery. L-I-I-O. Not Lylon, like some people say. And you've got your nickel metal hydride, nickel cadmium, lead acid, save data, load data, program. So, what happens if you have a lithium polymer? Well, what's the difference? Lithium ion has a nominal voltage of 3.6 and will charge up to 4.1, discharge down to 3 volts. So you just select that, go to lithium iron, or lithium iron, L I F E, which is also called L F E or LIFEPO4. Nominal voltage of 3.3 volts, um, full charge voltage of 3.6 volts, and minimum voltage of again eh, 2.6 to 3 volts. I don't know what this cuts out at. And you also have your lithium polymer, which has a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts, full charge voltage of 4.2, and a discharge voltage of four, uh, 3 volts. This is per cell, obviously. So other settings you can do, lithium polymer, lithium ion, with this check time, how long it will check, or that'll talk about in a second. That'll talk about safety timer, capacity cutoff. So safety timer will turn off after this many minutes charging or discharging. So I have that off, and also the capacity cutoff. That's how many uh, milliamp hours it will stop at. After that many milliamp hours, it will stop the charge. So you basically set that to a little bit over the full capacity of your pack, and that way it can't overcharge it. And here is where you turn off the buzzer. And now it's completely silent. Buzzer 
is still on so that if the completes the charge it will still go off. Input power low, that's the cut off the input voltage. So if I turn down the voltage, input voltage error. Turn it back up. Just exit and it's back. And now we're back to lithium ion top. Alright, so we've gotten that. And you can load and save different parameters based on voltage, current, and type of cell. And changing the lithium ion type changes this parameter. How it was lithium ion there, now it's lithium polymer. Now the different kinds of lithium types of charge. So with lipo charge, we'll charge it at 3, oh, we don't want to do 5S. So auto will actually check normally does a pretty good so check and it's found that it's a 2s so but normally you would check change it here because well it's pretty easy to know how many s your battery is so balance will charge it up and keep it charging until all of the different cells are fully charged and we'll use the balance port here you discharge them. That's if the pack is really out of balance. This one does not do a very good job in balancing. None of them do. Whoops, I'm leaning on the barrel. So I, I wouldn't really recommend it, but it is there. Fast charge, I wouldn't recommend using either. Storage, this will discharge it down to its nominal voltage, so 3.7 volts per cell. Oops. And discharge will discharge it to 3 volts per cell. Um, so, yeah. Now, let's get on to the next point. Alright, one thing I missed was uh, storing lithium batteries. Charging up a, ba a lithium battery too fully charged and then letting it sit is not always a good idea. However, if you've seen Hey Who Garcia's video on fully charged 18650 after, what, five years? It didn't lose very much capacity. So don't stress about it. It's okay. If your store going not going to be doing RC for the winter, or or summer then just store all your packs and charge them up next year don't discharge them down to zero, down completely that will ruin them so let's get on to nickel metal hydride charging so that you don't need the balance connector and you'll probably need well, depends on what it is. So, this charger uses D-peak, delta-peak, which is the delta change in voltage. And it will check, it'll, the voltage will be steadily climbing, and then at the end of charge it will peak, and then top off. So it sees that rise in voltage. However, you have to make sure that you're charging at the pr appropriate current. So this Traxxas 3300 it used to be a 7 cell, but this one popped, which this one is actually this one here. So I moved it over, tried to fix it. I haven't been able to solder on the back of that. But anyway, be careful with D-peak charging. Make sure you're charging don't, not at 1C, probably about half C or a little bit less. So for 3300, I'd want to charge at one and a half amps or a little bit lower. And another optional thing you can get, well, but it's recommended, is the temperature sensor. 
which you can change. So here you can change the sensitivity, nickel metal hydrate and nickel cadmium. That's a very advanced setting. And this is the temperature cutoff. So you just plug this into here. I think this is the right way around. And you will be able to cut it off at the right temperature, which you program in. And then that just has a little magnet and it goes on the cell and it measures the temperature of the cell. So I did blow this up on this charger, but I was going at probably three amps, which this isn't the highest quality cell, so it blew up. So cycling, this does have a cycle feature for nickel metal hydride, charge, discharge, cycle. So it will charge up and discharge. Focus. It will charge and cycle for the number of times here. Up to five times. And this is to refresh your pack if you haven't used it in a while or you haven't been quite good to it. So you can change whether it charges then discharges or discharges then charges. Just depends on whether or not it was charged already or not. I think that's it. Charge, discharge, yeah. Um, so nickel metal hydride, you should discharge about 0.9 volts per cell. That's how you do the discharge for nickel metal hydride. And let's talk about discharging. So this unit, um, I believe uses a PWM discharge. So it's not constant current and it's not the most accurate but it only has a one amp or five watt discharge rate. So if you have a 12 volt battery or a 10 volt battery and you want to discharge at one amp, well, it can't, it will only discharge at half an amp. And it does get pretty warm. So yeah, heck, roommate's got the radio on. Anyway, so, Accuracy. I will put a link to where I put all of my meters in series and compared the accuracy of this guy with the TB6B that I got. The, no, the B6 Mini, yeah, from Sky RC, which was way out, way off. So, hacking to improve accuracy. There is a project that you flash custom firmware to, which I will be trying on this guy, because he should be similar to the IMAX B6 Mini. That is what that um, custom firmware is for. But we'll try that. So, we'll move on to the last point, which is a teardown. Alright, so here it is, open it up. You can just pull out the four screws on either side. And you can see there. And let's see, you take a screwdriver that I did have. We'll use this one. And pop out the buttons. Let me get those out. Okay, so you just pull the buttons up. And <laughs> there we go. And you can slide off the screen. So there it is, let's get it close up. So, definitely has a lot better construction than the B6 Mini. See, there's, um, I believe one of them is the current, and one of them is the discharge resistor. Um, there's the discharge FET on the underside. These are the banana plugs. Got your balancing in here. Your balancing fits. There's a bunch of stuff under the screen, but you have to desolder that. Same with the microcontroller. And there is a header up here. 
sure if you can get that in the light. There you go, you can see it right there. And that where you that's where you connect to program it. There is this here, which used to be a USB port, which goes to another chip that is not populated populated. That's on the underside of the board. But anyway, here you can see the boost buck converter. It's got a MOSFET there and should be a MOSFET on this side, it's right there under the screen. See the four pins. And yeah, a couple disc capacitors. So overall, it's pretty good build quality, but I wouldn't recommend it necessarily. I would either get a real IMAX B6, whether you want the AC version or not, or the Turnigy AccuCell, I think, is also a pretty good one. But whether or not you can find those, eh, that's a different story. Because these are pretty old chargers. I'm not sure what the best one is that's new, but anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my other stuff about big power supplies and whatnot. Thanks for watching. See ya.